Let me try it out for you and help you decide if it's something that you want to buy. So go ahead and put that information in the comment section below. And if I can get my hands on it, I will make a video for it. And of course, if you find this review helpful, please make sure you mash that thumbs up button so the video is shared with more people. 2B number one has outstanding customer service. They're also quick to respond to emails requesting support about any issues that you might be having. As a matter of fact, all their products come with a 24 month warranty for no additional cost, which is hard to find these days. One of 2B number one sayings are the only question we can't fix is the one we don't know. So today we're gonna to be reviewing the 2B number one UDS 30 18 in one universal docking station that allows for up to 18 ports and dual monitor support up to 4K at 60 Hertz. Now for anybody who owns a MacBook, you know we don't have a lot of ports available. Well, not only does this solve the issue of expanding the amount of peripherals you can use, but the host port is also compatible with Windows operating system, which makes this a great solution for multi-computer homes. Now, I am personally a dual monitor user, and the MacBook Pro M1 cannot natively support dual monitors, and not all docks are able to support dual screens on the M1 chip. With this adapter, I am up and running on dual screens in no time. So this is done through either two HDMI or two Display Ports or the combination of either two. Now, although there are four total Display Ports, this product will only support two monitors. Now, for dual monitor support to work, you have to download the Display Link driver. And with the Display Link driver, it uses Screen Record to provide a feed to the additional monitor. Now, this driver does not store anything that is recorded on the screen. However, for copyright purposes, this will not allow you to watch any HD CP content. This means you will not be able to watch streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, iTunes, or Amazon Prime while using both monitors. Now I will say, I did test this and I was able to view Netflix and Hulu. However, the company did ask me to provide this disclaimer because this may not always be the case. So for today's review, we'll go through showing you the actual device itself, uh, explanation of the ports, how we set up the dock, and then we'll do a speed test on all the ports and close things out by providing my thoughts on the product. Now I'll place chapter markers to allow for easy navigation throughout the video. So again, looking at the dock, it is definitely a small profile. And when we look at the front of the dock, going from the bottom to the top, we have an audio in and out, three USB-A 3.0 ports, one USB-A 3.1 port that's rated at 10 gigabytes per second, and one USB-C 3.1 port also rated at 10 gigabytes per second, and our micro and regular SD card slot. On the back side, we do have an ethernet port for a LAN cable, uh, your host port, which provides power to both the unit itself and to your laptop, and a DC port, which is used as a power source for the dock itself and pass through power to that laptop. So as I mentioned earlier, we have those two HDMI or display ports and we have three USB-A 2.0 ports. So let's go ahead, uh, head to the computer and get this thing set up. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first thing that we have to do is download the drivers for the DisplayLink software. If you go to synaptics.com right at the top, there'll be a downloads link. You can click on that and it's gonna bring you to the supporting operating systems. Uh, I'm using a Mac, so I would click here. And then the download link is right here for the Display Link Manager. So I've already installed it, so if I try to do it again, it'll give me an error message. Uh, but it's just your normal installation. Uh, you know, read all the terms and conditions and accept all those. Uh, and then it'll continue with the download. One thing that I will point out is that when you go to install the driver, it will probably pop up and request that you allow for screen recording for the display link. As we mentioned, you have to allow that for both monitors to work. Uh, if you do not see that or you accidentally hit deny, uh, what you're gonna do is come over here to your little Apple icon, go to system settings, and then you're gonna go to privacy and security, uh, and you'll see screen recording. We'll click on that and we just make sure Display Link Manager is turned on. If you don't see Display Link Manager there, you can just click the plus button and search for Display Link Manager and add it that way. 
So that's all we have to do as far as the driver is concerned. So let's go ahead and see how we plug everything into the computer. We already downloaded the driver. So next we're gonna go ahead and plug the power cable into a power outlet, which I've already done in order to avoid any plumber crack slips on the screen. You're welcome for doing you that favor. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and run the USB-C cable from the host port on the back of the dock to the USB-C port on the laptop itself. Next, one end of your HDMI or DisplayPort cable will go into the first monitor, which I've already done, and then the other end will go into the first port on the back of the dock. We will repeat these same steps with a second monitor, and that's it for the setup. Only thing left to do is to connect your peripherals and call it a day. Okay, now that we're all set up, let's go ahead and start testing things out. First, we're gonna go ahead and test the speed of the USB-A ports. I have a Western digital hard drive, so first we'll give it a speed test on the MacBook itself. And the MacBook that I'll be using for this is a 14-inch MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 Max, 64 gigabytes of memory that's currently running on Ventura 13.2.1. To begin, I must point out that the Thunderbolt port on the MacBook will likely run faster than the dock due to the type of connection, but we'll see how it goes. So directly into the MacBook, we measured write speeds of 99.4 megabytes per second and read speeds of 80.8 .8 megabytes per second. Moving on to the three USB-A 2.0 ports on the back, I must call out that USB 2.0 is not designed for speed as this is one of the earliest versions of USB. I recommend you use these ports for peripherals like mice, keyboards, or printers that do not require fast transfer speeds. Okay, for port one, we got readings of 39.8 megabytes per second write speed and 34.4 megabytes per second read speed. Port two, we recorded 27.9 megabytes per second of a write speed and 27.2 megabytes per second for read speed. Port three, we recorded 37.1 megabytes per second write speed and 36.9 megabytes per second read speed. The average speed for the USB-A 2.0 is 34.9 megabytes per second write speed and 32.8 megabytes per second read speed. Now on the front of the dock, we have our three USB-A 3.0 ports and we measure the following results on those. Port one was 82.8 megabytes per second write speed and 118.4 megabytes per second read speed. Port two came in at 82.1 megabytes per second write speed and 94.3 megabytes per second read speed. Port 3, 79.6 megabytes per second write speed and 93.9 megabytes per second read speed with an average reading of 37.1 megabytes per second for write and 102.2 megabytes per second for the read speed. The next port we'll check is the USB-A 3.1 that measures in at 79.4 megabytes per second write speed and 108.5 megabytes per second read speed. And the final port we have uh, for those plugins is the USB-C 3.1 port which came in at a blazing 112.3 megabytes speed for write and 129.7 megabytes per second for read. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ethernet port. So I know many people probably just use the wireless in their home, but when it comes to my computer, I prefer to have a direct connection versus a wireless, and I'll demonstrate why. So for full disclosure, I do not have a LAN dongle for my laptop, so I will not be able to test the speed directly into the MacBook, but I will show you the speed difference versus Wi-Fi. Now I have gig internet through Spectrum and my laptop is about uh, six feet away from the wireless router, just for references for this test. So as you see, running Wi-Fi, the speed results for the MacBook was a download speed of 394 megabits per second and an upload of 41.0 megabits per second. Now when we plug in the LAN cable, we get speeds of 930 megabytes per second download and 40.1 megabytes per second upload. And last but not least, we'll test the speed of the SD and micro SD cards. For this test, I will be using a 128 gigabyte Amplin DuraData SD card with a speed of 300 megabits per second and a SanDisk Extreme 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Okay, when we put the SD card into the MacBook, we got speeds of 126.6 megabytes per second for write and 234.6 megabytes per second for read. And using the dock, we throttled way down to 78.7 megabytes per second for write and 82.2 megabytes per second for read. And using the micro SD card uh, within the MacBook, of course, using an adapter, 
we got a reading of 53.1 megabytes per second write speed and 90.2 megabytes per second read speed. Uh, however, when we use the dock, we got a reading of 51.78 megabytes per second write speed and 85 megabytes per second read speed. So my overall thoughts are this is a great product to solve for both port availability and dual monitor workaround. Now, of course, with every product, there are pros and cons, and here's my thoughts on that. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, I love the way that they laid out the ports. On other docks I've owned, the USB-A 2.0 ports have been on the front and the back of the dock. Now, as I mentioned, I use 2.0 ports for peripherals that don't require speed. So I'd have to have some things plugged in the front, some things plugged in the back, and having all the slower ports on the back makes cord management much easier. In addition to that, by having the faster ports on the front, it allows me to easily plug in and remove external hard drives without trying to do one of those blindly fine things on the back of the dock when I'm sitting at the desk. The other pro for me is the older model docks that I have require you to connect the dot to the laptop using a dual USB-C connector, taking up two slots, uh, which only leaves you one port left over. I'll explain why this is important to me when we get to the cons portion, uh, but just know that's one of the pros. And the last pro I'll call out is the placement of the SD card and micro SD card. Uh, a lot of times when I have docks that have these kind of things, it's kind of in between two of the USB-A ports and it's kind of difficult to get the card in and out. Um, maybe not so much with the regular SD card, but when uh, trying to do that with a micro SD card, it can be very, very difficult. So I'm definitely pleased with the placement of those. So some things I would like to see on future models, um, obviously I would love to see more USB-C ports. Uh, this is the case with most of the docks I see. Um, however, more and more products are switching to a USB-C port. Uh, so although there are USB-C to USB-A adapters, I still wish there was more USB-C ports available. Now, hinging off of what I talked about earlier, there is no Thunderbolt port on there. Uh, I'm not sure if this is an Apple restriction or not, but I do use a USB-C Thunderbolt RAID enclosure for backups. Uh, this enclosure will not read through the dock and I have to keep it plugged directly into the MacBook. It's not a deal breaker, especially since my dock is only taking up one port now instead of the two, but it would be nice to only need to unplug one cable when transporting my laptop to a different location. And lastly, not at fault of the dock, but the display driver, there is no way to set the driver to launch automatically at startup. It can launch at login, but not startup. Uh, if there is a way, as of making this video, I have not found it, but if I do, I will update in the uh, comments that there is a way to do it. So. Since I'm tethering the dock to a laptop, anytime the computer restarts, I have to open the laptop and log in for the driver to work and able to be able to use both external monitors. So that is everything for the review. I definitely appreciate you guys coming by and taking the time to watch the review. Please make sure that you put anything down in the comments that you want me to review uh, so I can try to get my hands on it for you. And then also just make sure you subscribe so that way anytime any new videos come out and one of them might be your review, uh, you'll know beforehand that it's been released. Other than that, thanks a lot. Have a great day.